Today on my table here are two interesting modifiers. They are the same one. This is the spotlight projectors. And this is the aperture one, and this is the non-light version. And I can tell you that these are some of the nicest modifiers you can get to change the way you do lighting. And in fact, may actually improve your photos if you know how to utilize them well. And in today's video, I'll talk about why I love these modifiers, what can they do, and show you some photos that I take with them, and really why I think uh, this is something that should belong in your lighting modifier bag, if there's a bag for it. The spotlight projector's job is really to concentrate the light through all the lenses. So if you look at this thing here, you can see actually lenses, and they actually even focus like a lens. So they do focus like a lens, you know, like what you have in your camera itself. And their job is really just to concentrate all the light and push it forward. So unlike other modifiers there, they use silver lining, bowl shapes or parabolics to push the light forward, reflect and push the light forward. Spotlight projectors act like camera lenses where you focus the beam through the glasses and push them straight onto wherever you want. As such, the lighting that they produce is very different from any other modifier you get. Because every other modifier it is like reflecting forward, there is always the hot spot in the center. And then not only that, uh, you get shadows that are never really sharp. You get shadows that are always slightly muddy. Uh, while spotlight projectors allow you to focus it like a lens to really get tech sharp shadows. Now, I personally do not really like tech sharp shadows. I mean, you can see some of my shots here. They have very defined dark and light regions, but I don't like to use the tech sharp shadows because uh, it's just not my style. But spotlight projectors can give you that tech sharp shadow if you want them. Now, so what do I actually use it for and why do I recommend it heavily? Firstly, you can focus the lens as such if you want to get the sun kiss tech sharp shadow, high contrast look, the spotlight projector is definitely for you. And then not only that, the spotlight projector produces a light quality that is really unlike any other modifier. It really feels like sun hitting your subject itself. When sun hits the skin, it is very different from when a modifier light hits your skin. There is no such smoothness and stuff. It's just all very crisp, very sharp, very detailed lighting. And this is where I love spotlight projectors. They really produce that strong, contrasty, sharp look that thereafter, you know, you can process it to just, you know, remove some of the, uh, I would say as the flaws on the skin, but you still get that very nice, contrasty look that you cannot get in any other modifiers easily. And then the next thing is spotlight projectors allow you to cut the light. So most of the projectors come with some sort of gate or window where you can actually open it up and then a round light comes out and then you can cut it. In fact, if you've seen many of my photos so far, you notice that it always comes in weird shape like squares, slitted lights or even triangles at times. And that's because the gates here allow you to cut the light. And then when you focus it, it gives you a very nice light cutout in the back scene. And you can do many creative things with it. Firstly, you can do like this lighting here. You can create like a square light on the subject. And then the other one, you can follow my crown shoes and you can create a slitted light on the subject itself. And you can do some other ways. It's like this shoot that I've done in my bathroom. Uh, you can have a lighting that lights only half the scene and the other scene is like totally dark. Spotlight projectors are so precise that they don't leak light randomly anywhere. They are very controlled and you, if you know how to use it, you can really get a very nice cut light that you cannot get with other modifiers without you know using things like uh, I guess, negative fields and many other, uh, I'll say as what they call it, cookie cutters on the scene itself to just shape the light, you know, throwing through a very long distance modifier. But a spotlight can do it without that distance itself, so it's fantastic. Uh, and the last thing, spotlight projectors. This is something that I don't use it often, and that's the ability to mount gobos inside and it gives you pattern lights. I don't have much pictures to show you um, because I don't really fancy this that much. I use it a few times, I just can't get over how it looks. The only one I use is mainly the window gobo, and this creates like uh, something like, you know, sunlight streaming through uh, blinds itself. But even then, this looks very fake. So my. I rarely use it because I don't really like the effect itself. So, in this video already, uh, I just want to share you that these spotlight projectors are fantastic modifiers. I mean, you've seen the photos I've taken so far. I think these modifiers, if you know how to use them well, will really change the way you like a subject, change the way you do lighting for your photos. And really, maybe even bring more interest to you in lighting itself. Because they can be modded, they can be shaped. You know, they can be transformed to many interesting patterns that 
you cannot get any mod any modifier. It's not that simple as just, you know, greeting your likes or maybe you know, feathering them. In the spotlight mount, you can actually do so many things with it that it may really change and interest you a lot more in lighting itself. And uh, then the next question I know I just answer. You know, sometimes people will ask. Definitely, what's the difference between an expensive spotlight mount and a cheap spotlight mount? Really, it's down to firstly transmission, like your lens, which means how much light passes through the modifier without losing it. And then next is the quality of the optics, where you will get how sharp the line is, is there chromatic aberrations, and is the line fuzzy, or what is the tint of light, if any. So these spotlight mounts I have here are the slightly more expensive ones, but not the most expensive one. These are all video spotlight mounts. Uh, I noticed that they lose a lot less power than those used for photos, where they use Canon lenses in front. And depending on which Canon lens you use, you get a, either a better, sharp, less chromatic aberration outcome, or you get a slightly more fuzzy outcome, but at a lower price. I mean, a lot of them will use it at 51.8. I mean, I'll show you some of these cheaper uh, spotlight mounts. You can see they're using Canon lenses. Now, just to note, that this mount here, especially this aperture one, is fully made of metal because it's meant to support their very hot lights, like their 600 watt lights, which is very, very hot. Don't try to use uh, those Canon lenses one on your 600 watt lights because they will melt any plastic component on the way out. The light is very, very hot. You know, if you put your hand here, it will actually hurt you. So, the Spotlight Mount is one of the best modifiers you can get to change the way you do lighting. And if you are interested in any form of lighting, be it video lighting or photography lighting, do look out to buy one and try yourself. I mean, if you don't want to spend money, the Forza one is really affordable, 200 plus, and it's a really good one if you ask me. And I mean, you will really enjoy the output. In fact, you can use a video light to shoot photos easily. Now, uh, there's one more thing I want to talk about, and that is the angle of the spotlight mount itself. So, spotlight mounts usually come with some sort of angle or mm uh, millimeters in terms of their focal range. Now, if you buy those photography ones, normally they use the, the camera lenses, so you have to convert it into degrees later. But in the spotlight mount, this is written here 36 degrees, which means that the light will disperse to 36 degrees. And what happens is that if you have very little space, you want to have a bigger number here. Usually, lenses that are wider have more distortion. They lose a lot more power. They are not as sharp, not as nice, not as contrasty. That's my personal experience, you know, when I try it out. Uh, if you have the space, use the longer one, the 19 degrees one or the 18 degrees or 16 degrees, depending on which brand. And those have, if you ask me, sharper outcomes, less distortion. And not only that, they actually retain a lot more light power and they can be used for a very long distance. So uh, it really depends on the space you are using these spotlight mounts. If you are using in open space, try to get those with smaller degrees. And if you are using in very constricted areas, try to get those with bigger degrees, but just live with a little bit of flaw, especially in terms of the sharpness and the distortion. And that's about it for today. I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, I really wanted to share this because I have shot so many photos recently with the spotlight mounts or the spot projectors, you want to call them at times. And I really enjoy using them. And this is something that I really want to share so that you know everybody here can try it out yourself and enjoy the quality of light coming out from these very unique modifiers. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this short little video and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.